What's going on everybody? Austin here, your friendly neighborhood threat hunter, back again from Cyborg Security with another Threat on Deep Dives video. Hey, I just wanna say thank you everybody so much who have been watching our videos and showing us a lot of support. I really appreciate it. And if you wouldn't mind hitting that subscribe button, that like button, especially if you like content like this and you wanna see more of this sort of stuff in the future, I really appreciate it. Um, today we've got a cool new video for you. It's living off the land techniques. And specifically, we're gonna be talking about downloading files on Microsoft Windows. Um, living off the land techniques is not something new. It's been around for quite a while and uh, it's something that's very ubiquitous out there among threat actors and especially something that's great for threat hunters to understand. And that's why we're going to start a whole new sub-series of the Threat on Deep Dives on living off the land techniques. So it's just going to be part one and I thought that downloading files on Microsoft Windows would be a very easy introductory topic on this subject. Um, if you got no idea what I'm talking about, don't worry because um, I'm going to do a whole overview on these techniques so you understand what I'm talking about. We'll get your feet wet. Um, and then later I'm going to emulate these techniques on systems of our own so you understand how they work, understand how they operate from a threat actor's mindset. Um, and then later on in the video, stick around because I'm going to show you how to hunt for these techniques in your environment, for your enterprise, or wherever you are so you can understand how to defend yourself. Um, so yeah, buckle up. It's going to be a fun one. Let's get into it. All right, so what exactly do we mean when we say living off the land and living off the land techniques? Well, this term, and along with many other terms in the computer security industry for that matter, gets borrowed from the original term for living off the land. And if you see that picture there on the left, it means living off the countryside, living in nature, and using only the local resources around you in order to survive for things like water and food. So this term's carried over into the cybersecurity industry to talk about threat actors and malicious actors who oftentimes they have access to a remote system and they're trying to accomplish their malicious deeds in terms of sometimes they need to download files, which is what we're gonna talk about today to get more tools onto that system to accomplish their objectives, or they need to move laterally onto other systems, or they need to crash a process in order to accomplish something. They, they could bring in more tools and more junk onto that system, which increases their likelihood that they're gonna be detected on that system, or what they could do is just use the abundant resources that operating systems that they're um, interacting with, like Microsoft Windows, Mac OS, Linux. These are rich operating systems that have many tools available, and they can use the tools they have available to them to accomplish their objectives. So today we're gonna to be talking about specifically downloading files remotely. Um, so a lot, lots of things are available to them on Microsoft Windows to accomplish this. So you can see here, there's like 20 different EXEs listed here. These can all be used to download files remotely in some manner on Microsoft Windows. And all these tools come by default, except for some of them that I have there, like Microsoft Word, Excel, PowerPoint, that almost always are on Microsoft Windows systems. But all of these utilities come standard on Microsoft Windows and can be used to download files remotely. Um, I've got two highlighted there in red, both Bits Admin and Cert Util. Those are the two that I'm just gonna show you today as an example, um, but all of these can be used to download files. And there's a really cool website, which I'm gonna show you called Law Boss, and uh, that can be a really great resource in terms of understanding living off the land techniques as well. So this is Law Boss, or maybe it's Law Base. I'm not too sure. Um, regardless, it stands for Living Off the Land Binaries and Scripts. This is a fantastic website in order to understand living off the land techniques on Microsoft Windows. I will throw a link down in the description for it. So if you wanna check it out, I highly recommend that you do. It's really great. Um, also, it's open source on GitHub, which um, you know we love to see. So if you wanna go there on GitHub, you can check this all out. Um, if you scroll down farther on this website, you'll see it's broken down into columns. On the far left column, there's a list of EXEs, these binaries um, that come installed on most Microsoft Windows systems. And in the center here, in the center column called functions, you can see all the different things that you can do with these binaries that come on most Microsoft Windows systems. So they're broken down into things like download and alternate data streams um, and dumping and all, all these sorts of different things that these um, binaries can be utilized to do these are so core to living off the land, um, and this website really breaks it down um, really awesome. So I highly recommend that you check this out. All right, so here I am in a Windows 10 virtual machine in my environment. The first thing I'm gonna show you is what's not a living off the land technique. And this would be a remote actor bringing their own tools onto a Windows system. So here over here, you can see that I've got a wget.exe binary. This is something that doesn't come uh, on Windows systems by default, but is a pretty standard utility in Linux uh, sort of realms. So you can see if I run a wget command, which I've got rigged up here, um, and I can just go ahead and download a cat picture from somewhere in my environment. So you can see it downloaded this cat picture, and this is how we can use um, command line tools to download pictures in our environment, but this is not a living off the land technique. So I'll go ahead and uh, delete this cat picture, and I'm gonna show you a utility that we could use instead, 
um, that comes uh, installed default on Windows systems. So here I got a command set up for Bits Admin. Uh, Bits Admin stands for Background Intelligence Transfer Service. Um, and this is a tool that's um, quite legacy on Windows. It's actually being depreciated, um, but still comes standard installed even on Windows 10 systems. You can see we give it some switch options here with the transfer, and this is a job number. And then we'll give it a path. Um, I'm gonna give it a path to my own personal website, um.wtf, for a cat picture. And it's gonna save this cat picture here in our folder. So if I run this uh, tool, and you can see that it's pretty legacy. It has this, uh, um, this sort of old school output. And uh, it's also not very fast. Um, it says 20 minutes, but it's actually, it's gonna go down here a little bit. It should uh, buffer here pretty quickly. Now it's saying nine minutes. Uh, pretty quickly, it should say a couple seconds. But as you can see, this is a pretty legacy tool. But it does come installed on um, all these Windows systems. So it, if an actor doesn't wanna bring a tool into a system, which can increase their likelihood for detection like wget.exe, they can use Bits Admin and it works just the same. We can see that our cat picture is now done downloading and we have um, downloaded this file. And normally they're not gonna be downloading cat pictures, they're gonna be downloading malware or some sort of uh, um, additional malware onto, their, onto your systems. Um, so I'll go ahead and delete that cat picture once again. And um, as promised, I'm going to show you two techniques. I'm also going to show you uh, cert util. So cert util is also um, comes installed on all Windows systems by default. And it's a utility to work with uh, CA certs and um, web certs and things like that. So of course, it has some functionality built into it to download files because it interacts with the web um, natively. So you can see here, I give it a switch option for URL cache, um, split and a dash F switch. And then we'll give it a um, path to that same uh, website, my personal website. And we also give it a space and then we give uh, where we want the cat picture to go. In this case, we don't have to give it the full path. I'll just say that we wanna download it here into our um, local directory. So we run that command. It's quite a bit faster than Bits Admin. So perhaps this is a utility that threat actors will use more often uh, than Bits Admin. And you can see that if, um, if I open up this cat picture, um, that it did also indeed download. So this is two examples of living off the land techniques that you can use on Microsoft Windows to download files remotely from the internet. All right, so now that we've emulated these techniques on a Windows system of our own, now I'm gonna show you the fun stuff, how to hunt for these things. So uh, here I'm using Splunk. I'm also gonna show you CrowdStrike shortly after this. Um, and you can see here that we've got Windows event logs pumping into our Splunk system. The search that I'm gonna do is for a new process name. This is essentially the process path that um, where these binaries were executed from. And here I've got these two binaries listed. You could go out and list those 20 binary series to make sure you catch everything. But for this example, I'm just gonna do these two. And you can see that I'm looking for these coming from any path. A lot of times there's multiple paths where these tools can ex exist on these systems. So you wanna make sure that you catch everything. So we'll do a um, asterisk, a wildcard, with a backslash bits admin and cert util.exe. In order to narrow down the search, what I've done here is I've gone on and grabbed process command line, and I'm looking for a process command line that contains HTTP. So if it's containing anything that's HTTP, um, it knows that it's trying to download a file off the web, most likely. Um, and you can see here with this query, I went ahead and did some cleanup as well. And you can see here, um, I already executed this uh, this query, and you can see that it comes back with uh, both the process path, bits admin, and cert util, and those exact commands that we were just running in our Windows system earlier, downloading those dirty, malicious cat pictures. Um, so you can see that uh, this query picked this up quite well. Um, keep in mind that you know no query is gonna be perfect, that you know sometimes maybe a process command line might contain the text HTTP, and it might not be malicious. Also, bits admin and cert util, they might be being used by a system administrator, or they might be used by some sort of IT person um, that's not doing malicious things in your environment, or perhaps an installer might be using this to download other files. If you're downloading something using a bat script or like an installer from Chocolatey or something like that, it may use these utilities and might not be malicious. However, that's a job for a threat hunter to um, look at this, uh, the returns from this query, be able to quickly leaf through the malicious and non-malicious things. So if you're seeing something like cat pictures that obviously aren't malicious being downloaded, or if you're seeing something more likely like an installer from a um, IT person within your environment downloading them, then you know that's something not malicious. However, something probably is gonna stand out pretty quickly um, to be able to be seen that it's some sort of thing that needs to have somebody follow up on that, perhaps then needs to be handed to an instant responder or something of that nature. Um, so that's Splunk, and now I'm gonna go ahead and pivot over to CrowdStrike. All right, so here I am in CrowdStrike. Um, it's very similar here. CrowdStrike uses the same exact syntax as Splunk, so pretty easy to understand. Um, the only thing that's really different is the field names and you don't need that index and source type. So you can see I've got image file name with bits admin and cert util 
in command line um, HTTP, containing HTTP. Um, and you can see I did the same sort of cleanup here and the results are exactly the same. Mostly just wanna come over here and show you that you can do um, this hunting on both a SIM platform and an EDR platform and get really great results um, using this query. All right, everyone, thank you so much for watching our videos. I have a lot of fun making these. I hope you learned some stuff about living off the land techniques. We have some more future videos on living off the land coming up along with some other new exciting videos that we have on the horizon. So thank you everybody so much and I will see you all in the next Thread on Deep Dives. Bye.